Appraisal coming up. Here's what you should be doing on the day of. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha and I'm a realtor in Northwest Atlanta. One of the biggest challenges I'm seeing in today's market, aside from just getting your offer accepted in the first place, is all around the appraisal report. I'm being asked by sellers and homeowners, how can I maximize my home's value? How do I make sure I'm really gonna get the most value out of my appraisal? And of course, buyers who had to pay over asking, significantly over asking, are worried about their investment and they really wanna make sure that the home is actually worth what they're paying for it. So I have a whole video about how to maximize your home's value during the appraisal process. I will put a link to it above above. Um, and I will also put it in the description box below. If you haven't watched that, you definitely want to go back and watch that. This gives you tons of tips and information on things you can do prior to the appraisal to make sure you're maximizing your home's value. And in today's video, I'm going to give you five things you should be doing on the day of your actual appraisal appointment. And everything I discuss here today for your appraisal appointment also applies to any of your inspection appointments, your home inspection, a pool inspection, anything like that, anything that's done during the due diligence period. So assuming you watch my other video and you've already completed everything on that list, all the repairs, all the updates, the maintenance items, the house is really shining and is still in show condition, then here's what you can do on the day of to really make sure that the appointment goes smooth. Number one, turn on all your lights, pull back all your drapes and pull up your blinds. Now I give this advice when you're preparing for showings for buyers to come to, through and potentially look at the house because a bright, well-lit house always shows better than a dark one, but the same is going to be true for an appraiser. Now, I had talked about a little bit in my last video about how impressions are everything, and this is going to give you the best impression possible for your appraiser. So make sure all your lights are on, your drapes are pulled back, and your blinds are up. This way, the appraiser doesn't have to do that as he goes around the house. Number two, leave your garage door closed. Now, I actually learned about this recently. I didn't realize or even think about it, but the appraiser actually wants to be able to test the garage door, especially if it's an FHA or VA, they want to test it for safety issues. So make sure your garage door is closed, but it does bring up another good point, which is make sure that it's closed, but that the remote or the way to open it is easily accessible, easy to find and labeled. Number three, kennel, crate, or remove your pets. Now, I also give this advice as well when preparing for showings. You'll see sort of a trend. A lot of the stuff that I'm advising you to do for showings, for potential buyers, you should also be doing for all your appraisers and inspectors. And this is the same. You have a stranger coming into your house, so you want to protect both yourself and any liabilities and them. And your pets might be scared with strangers coming in the home. So if they're used to being crated or kenneled, you want to do that. But it's even better if you can actually remove them. There's nothing like walking through a home with a super cute dog either crying or barking their heads off as you're trying to go through and concentrate on what you're doing. So you don't want any distractions for the appraiser. So you want to be able to remove them from the property if at all possible. And you can't just lock them in a room because the appraiser needs to see every single room and they need to measure every single room. So just putting them into a closet or a bedroom is not acceptable. I also want to thank a viewer out there, Rick Nielsen, because he actually gave some great advice in my last appraisal video, which was make sure you clean up all of the pet landmines, I'll say, in your yard front or back or wherever they used to go to the bathroom. Uh, the last thing the appraiser wants to do is be walking through your yard and step in a big pile of mess. And they certainly don't want to track that back into your house or into their vehicle. I'm sure it happens a lot. So I'm sure they would very much appreciate not having that as a potential challenge at your house. I do actually tell my sellers this again before showings, but it's never something I've reminded them at the appraisal or inspection process. So that was a great tip. Thanks, Rick. Number four, make sure every room is accessible. This goes for storage rooms, closets, utility rooms. Nothing can be locked. The appraiser has to be able to go into every single space in your home. Not only do they need to have eyes on it, they need a photo of it, but they also need to measure it so they can get accurate square footage for your home. The same goes for any HVAC system you have, your boiler, your furnace, your air conditioner units, and your electrical panel. They need to be able to get eyes on it. They need to be able to see that it is in good condition. And most appraisers actually need to take a photo of it as well for the report. You also want to think about basement and attic spaces. Make sure that they are also accessible. The doors are not locked. If anything has to be locked, 
make sure you have a key right there at the door so that the appraiser can get in. But really everything should be unlocked because you can come around and lock it right back up right after the appointment. And for your attic, make sure that you point out where your attic entrance is. Sometimes it's buried in a closet. So maybe even taping up a, a little sign so that they know where the attic is. If there are stairs, that's great. They'll pull them down on their own typically. Um, but if a ladder is needed to get up into the attic, most inspectors actually come with their own ladders. Number five, leave the house. Okay, I know I get flack for this one for a lot of times for my sellers, they want to be there. I actually talked a little bit about this in my last video. Do not follow the appraiser or the inspector around the house. Nothing annoys them more than that. Um, but if you can get everybody out of the house, get them out of the house. It, again, we're preparing the same way for an appraisal as you would for a showing. You don't wanna have tons of people in the house. Get the kids out if you can. Go for a walk around the block. Um, the appraiser, when they take photos of the home, and they will take some photos, they have to for the report, same for the inspector, they can't have people in the photos. And sometimes shifting people or the, you know, the teenager playing video games or, you know, the mom and dad taking a nap or whatever it is, you, you just got to get them out of the house. They can't be in those photos. And also during the schedule process of the appraiser, you wanna to talk to your agent about who's actually attending the appraisal. Sometimes the buyer's agents will volunteer to meet the appraiser there, which means you just do all of these things to prepare and then you leave. And then the buyer's agent will meet the appraiser there since the appraisal is being paid for by the buyers. Me personally, as a listing agent, I like to meet the appraisers there. Again, in my last video, I talked about how I make an appraisal package and I like to give that to them. So anytime it's my own listing, I volunteer to meet the appraiser there. It also takes some pressure off the seller from being there. They can, again, can leave the home. I'll take care of everything for them. However, I do have some homeowners that really want to be there or can, or if there's a scheduling issue, I'll drop my packet off ahead of time. So if you are meeting the appraiser there instead of your agent, then just, Follow this advice of just not following them around. You can be accessible to them. Let them know that, you know, you can let them in. Let them know that you're going to be hanging around or you'll be out back if they do have any questions. But nine times out of ten, they're going to go in, they're going to do all their measurements, all their photos, and they're going to leave. And they really don't tend to have a lot of questions. I do occasionally get asked the question of how long is an appraisal, and that's really gonna depend on the size of the house, obviously larger house, longer appraisal. Um, I would say about a 2,000 square foot home takes about 15, 20 minutes for the appraiser to kind of go through, draw out their floor plans, get everything measured. Certainly a larger home could take longer, and I have had even some smaller homes appraisers just they kind of work at their own pace. So if you're looking about blocking out any time, just block out probably about a half hour to an hour, and that way you're safe. If you followed all the advice I gave in my last video, as well as everything we talked about here today, then I'm confident you're gonna have a smooth appraisal appointment and maximize your home's value. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this information helpful. You know, I wanna make the content that you're looking for. So if you have an idea for a future video or a question as it relates to today's real estate market, please leave it in the comment section below. And I'll see you next week.